also now joined on the phone by the new head coach for the Musselman Girls basketball team, Tim Potter. How are you doing today, Coach Potter? I'm doing good, guys. How are y'all doing? We're doing well. Thanks for coming on with us. And uh, you're the new girls basketball coach in Musselman, but not unfamiliar to the Appleman. Uh, so, coaching-wise, this is actually year 10 at the high school, and I've been with Musselman, the boys, for seven years. And um, I was also a player there uh, for four years. And I had a year with Spring Mills girls, and I actually just joined the girls staff for Musselman this past year. So, obviously, you know, you have your roots with the Appleman. Um, congratulations on getting the job. This is Nick Verzellini. Um What are you looking to do with this team? Uh, it seems like Musselman has had, you know, some decent seasons the last few years. Uh, haven't quite go, gotten over the hump in the EPAC, but have been, you know, always a team that competes and, and plays hard. So what are you looking to do with this team uh, now that you're taking over? Well, I think this what you said, that they play hard. That's their strength. I'm looking to build on that. Um, I think it's really important uh, to build relationships and set the environment to be good. Um, the good news is last year me joining the staff was a good opportunity for me to get to know um, some of the girls already. So that was kind of a head start for me. Um, I think it's just making it more about a team effort than individual and getting girls to buy in. Um, I, I've been kind of busy already with trying to get things ready with the schedule and going over to the middle schoolers, trying to get them balled in, let them know that, hey, you know, I really want to invest into you all as well. And I think there's some good things we can build off of that. Coach Potter, Colin McLaughlin here. Congratulations on getting the job just Tell us about uh, why you decided to uh, apply for the head coaching position since you already mentioned uh, your experience as an assistant coach for the past decade. Well, being a head coach is always something I've always thought of myself of doing um, ever since, you know, at a young age. Um, just it's been nice to, to experience from previous coaches I played for. Coach Basil's had a lot of success with the boys. I played under him, coached under him. Um, it, it just gaining experience and, and just want to have my shot at it. And, um, and, and these girls have a lot of potential. Um, I think what you guys were saying, we've been kind of in the mix, but we just haven't gotten over that hump. Um, I think it's a good opportunity. I, I thought this is a good chance I could build off of that. And um, there's a lot of potential, and I just want to exploit that. And I think uh, we can make have a chance to make some things happen. Coach Dylan Bishop here. Uh, this is going to be first time as a you know, get to – man the helm as the head coach. What do you want your identity of your team to be with you as the head coach? Well, if I had it my way, I'm a very defensive-minded, defense-first um, coach. Um, I think it's very important between defense and effort um, because that can win you a lot of ball games and dictate the tempo. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, defense is guaranteed, offense isn't. And what I mean by that is there's going to be all shooting nights. Um, but be playing hard on defense and doing the little things like being scrappy, rebounding, and diving for the loose ball, things like that you can control and bring that to the table every, every game. So I'm looking to be very good after it, play hard, and a fast tempo. And when, you know, we talk about Musselman, we, you know, obviously we knew head coach, former head coach A.D. Elliott stepped down, but when he stepped down, he said he was going to kind of help with the process of bringing in a new coach. Um, how did, how has he helped you in this process? Oh, he's been great. He, he's been, and uh, me and him actually coached together with the boys before he even actually took over the girls. He, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he's helped a lot with the schedule, connections with coaches, um, he, he's given you know some tips and things that his way, and it's just been kind of nice. To, to we we have a lot in common when it comes to style with playing hard, um, but but things like that, it, it, it's been really nice to have a good supporting cast under him. Coach, you mentioned uh, wanting to build on what you've had with this team in the past and trying to take it to the next level. Who all are you looking to be some of your leaders for this upcoming season? Well, the, the thing that's nice this year is we didn't graduate anybody. Um, obviously, um, the seniors, I'm looking to make a jump immediately. I, I'm looking at a girl like Sarah Price, maybe Elena Funkhauser in that mix um, to elevate a little bit with the leadership. Very vocal 
but there's also some good young pieces coming up that I, I think are really good. Um, uh, let's see, Nevaeh Thompson was one of those players that fits the identity, plays hard. I think she can be very big for us this year. Um, and some of those younger girls, like more class uh, is coming up, can be pretty good in the freshman class. So I, I think just some of the – I think it's going to be more of a team effort, not, not necessarily individual. And it's going to be trying to get some of these girls to – so to get that leadership role established because I think they've really had that opportunity, per se. So I think this year will be a good chance to, to see how they can uh, get everyone together. Since you just got the job, it's the same year that the new transfer rule has went into effect for high school in the state of West Virginia. I just want to get your thoughts on this new rule and how you're going to navigate the transfer portal interesting uh, so obviously we've seen the effects of that with college um, my prediction is I, I think you're going to see some players test the waters this year for sure um, some have already announced uh, going to other places um, and I think it's going to be more of a wait and see thing for the majority but I think when you look at year two and year three it's going to start and it's becoming like hey there's like a recruiting factor to this um, but personally for me this year particularly I like the pieces I have I'm not going to really tap too much into that transfer business. I think there's pieces here that I can mold and work with, um, but I, I wouldn't rule it out for the future. If you know, I think it could be something definitely interesting. I, I'm for myself. I'm going to probably do kind of a wait and see thing because that's you know that's new waters for for all the coaches and stuff around here because um, that's usually typically a college thing. But I think it's going to have a big factor uh, around here and around the state. And you saying it's going to have a big factor around here. I think we know that the Spring Mills program not going to look like it did last year. How do you think that opens up uh, kind of the floodgates for every, all the other teams in the EPAC? Well, I think that that was a big one for sure. Um, Spring Mills was kind of in a world of its own. They had a, a an amazing year last season. They did some good things. And I think now that it's kind of leveled out, I think you're going to see it to be very competitive. I don't think there's like an absolute – dominant team in the EPAC, so I think it's wide open. Um, I look for all the teams around here to be pretty competitive. And you mentioned the league being pretty wide open this year, and I know Coach Elliott was big on not only growing girls' basketball at Musselman, but growing girls' basketball in the state. How do you see uh, girls' basketball being growing growing around this area? Um, well, I think it just comes down to, to buy-in again. Um, over the years, unfortunately, it seems like it's kind of dwindled off a little bit. Um, but maybe maybe the transfer portal will change that. I don't know. But um, I, I think the talent level, the girls are starting to come out more. And, and I think it's just being vocal. I think promoting girls' basketball, um, you, you know, giving it more opportunity to unfold. Speaking with Tim Potter, the new head coach for the Musselman Appleman or the Musselman Lady Appleman program, and, and coach, they changed uh, the NFHS recently changed kind of that free throw rule. Have you looked into that at all? Um, not too much. Um, it, it, it refreshed my memory a little bit. I read a little bit on it. I can't remember the exact um, change. If I believe, I believe it's five fouls every quarter. You shoot two free throws, and they reset every quarter. Yes, that's what. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, my thoughts on that are, I mean, I guess that could be good and bad. Um, I guess it's just one of those things where whether you think it's good or bad, you have to just adapt. Um, and I think it's just important that I just start reiterating that to the girls now, like, Hey, look, this is going to be in place. Um, and we'll just have to start game planning and be strategic and just buy into that because that's one of those things where it's kind of out of your control. Thanks, Coach Potter, for the time, and we hope to be talking here soon as you uh, as you get into some summer workouts.